Welcome to WP Tonic episode 192. And today we're talking the beaver builder ecosystem, which is very timely because the beaver themer just dropped yesterday and uh, it's already uh, making a big splash. It really looks like it's gonna be a game changer. But before we get into that, let's introduce the panel. And we're gonna start with Kim. Hi, I'm Kim Schivler. Um, I teach people how to build WordPress websites and online learning platforms. You can find me at howtobuildanonlinecourse.com, whitegloveWebtraining.com, and if you want to know more about my corporate programs, uh, you can actually now find me at kimshivler.com. Excellent. And then also Lee Jackson's in the house. Um, bonjour. Um, <laughs> je m'appelle Lee. Uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> Uh, I am from WP Innovator. That's the podcast for design and web agencies. And I also am the founder, CEO, big long title, uh, of uh, Angle Crown. And we work with design agencies building WordPress themes from their designs. So head on over to WPInnovator.com to find out more. Excellent. And then also in the house, we have Mendel. Hello. Uh, Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, I, uh, hey everybody. <laughs> I'm, I'm Mendel. Uh, I am the uh, head of the evangelism programs for WordPress and other developer stuff over at GoDaddy. Um, if you haven't been to GoDaddy, it's GoDaddy.com. Sorry, I just felt like dropping a URL like Lee did, but uh, everybody knows it, so whatever. Uh, anyway, super, super stoked to be on <laughs> with you guys. Very excellent. And then also we've got Sally. Good morning. I'm Sally Gitch. Rhymes with sketch. Um, my business is WP Fangirl. I do uh, uh, mostly uh, custom uh, theme development for uh, small businesses and nonprofits. And I seem to have a side non-business providing free support for people's questions about the events calendar because I was foolish enough to write a bunch of tutorials. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm the organizer of the East Bay WordPress meetup in Oakland, California. And then also Jackie... Hey, I'm Jackie D'Elia. I run Jackie D'Elia Design here in Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm a virtual agency, and I am also the host of Rethink.fm, Forward Thinking Podcast. Yeah, and definitely go subscribe to that. Go Tar Heels. Uh, anyway, and then my co-host, Jonathan. Oh, thanks, John. Um, I'm the founder of WP Tonic, so you can blame me for this madness. And we're a support maintenance WordPress company. We're your trusted partner, aren't we, John? Definitely trusted. And then I'm John Locke. My business is Lockdown Design. I provide SEO and custom WordPress development for all you businesses that are too busy to handle it on your own. So uh, before we get into today's main topic, which is the Beaver Builder ecosystem, we have a couple of news stories that Jonathan uh, picked out. And the first one is there's a new WordPress plugin blocking spam user registrations uh, using the stop forum spam database. Now, if anybody that's ever built a membership site or any type of forum can attest that spam signups are a big problem. Uh, Kim, what, what you handle a lot of membership sites and, and online course sites. How do you deal with uh, currently with, with spam signups? I charge for all of them. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's you just don't get spam signups when they that's, have to pay money <laughs> it's true it's true if they have to hand out a credit card you know that that's uh that will that will do it for you so that's um, totally true the, the the weird thing that i'm uh having to deal with right now on the camp press site is um people half completing so i have like partial completions on for signups Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no spam filter uh, plugin that addresses partial signups. Um, so this is like a good step, but I, I don't know that it addresses like advanced, advanced marketing uh, tactics with, with membership sites. That's I true. Know. I have that with a big launch we just did. And you get, if anybody ditches the shopping cart, particularly with the, the Stripe integration, which I love, but you end up with a bunch of pendings. Yeah. And they so, have to go delete all that. You're like, oh my God, I got 50 people that were interested. And then you're like, oh no, that was zero actually. They were. <laughs> Lee, Lee, any experience with uh, spam signups and how do you combat that? 
Yeah, but the the way we always did it was just uh, put in a capture because we found it was just bots that were doing the spam signups for us. Mm -hmm. So with a capture, that just seems to stop it. Um, with a, you can do Honeypot as well as just a good old fashioned capture, um, and job done for us. Apart from the odd time waster, which you you get who actually wanted to enter in that key, so that kind of does it for us. No, I, and I, I recently I ran into a case where. I had a client with uh, a membership site and, and I did that with, with the CAPTCHA and the honeypot. And normally that does kind of eliminate most of it, but there was still some coming through. So uh, in cases like that, um, I was using stop spammers, uh, but because that was like an older plugin, I was like, mm, I don't know, but I think this one, uh, I might switch them over to this. And it might be worth a look. Uh, Jackie, any uh, experience not, with dealing with spam? Uh, yeah, nothing else I can add, really. I'm, I'm with Lee. I've done some CAPTCHA and Honeypot, and I haven't tried this plugin, but this looks really interesting. Yeah, uh, ages ago, I think I've used the, like, there was like a stop spam or spam registrations or something plugin that, that I use. I, I'm one of those people who thinks that CAPTCHA is the instrument of the devil. And uh, I, I really personally hate using it as a human, and it's got like all kinds of accessibility and, and other issues. Uh, so I would much rather go with you know a honeypot kind of a thing. But um, you know I have found that things like even turning on the, the honeypot and gravity forms, uh, I get some contact forms filled out by spammers, but they had to be human to do it. Uh, and it, it does definitely mean that you don't have floods. Mendel, this is my cat, BC. I call her ADD Kitty because she can never get enough attention. I love her. <laughs> Already, wonderful. I love her. She's awesome. Yeah, she's <laughs> great. You know, Mendel, the one thought on that, though, depending on where this plugin captures it and blocks it based on the spam list, it could possibly, depending on how you're set up, keep from those credit card ditches. It's like for us, the ditch is happening on the second page. Uh, mm. if, it, if it's picking it up when they first get there and not letting them fill out that first page, then it would might maybe keep, from, in my instance anyway, from, from those pendings that I have to go delete. So it'd be yeah. worth a look. Yeah, I think it also depends on the plugin, right? Whether or not, yeah. uh, in, in this case, it's, it's gravity, but th there, there are plenty of, plenty of different ecosystems within the sign-up uh, world too, right? So, yeah. Definitely. Jonathan. Yeah, I think I just agree with everybody else. I think uh, I was listening. I think I forgot his name, Lee. I think you were interviewing a security guy, weren't you, on your last podcast? And um, that was a week ago. I can't remember that far back. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. I can't remember any of it. Uh, um, but um, it's the, also the security. Uh, you know, of being attacked through any kind of form and and. You got that side of it as well, haven't you, John? You got to be a little bit aware of, haven't you? Yeah, you most certainly do. Um, you know, security, spam, always an issue. Uh, bots are always going to be here. Uh, humans that are filling out stuff are, are always going to be here. So it's def definitely something worth checking out. Uh, our second news story is also from the Tavern. And in this one, we got the multilingual. Uh, plugin closed to four hundred and fifty thousand dollars in seed funding with WordPress expanding into uh, more and more a lot of the growth that we're seeing is is basically international I think this is a, a very interesting move and side capital is uh, the, the people who put up the money for this um, thoughts on this uh, Mendel oh hey uh, I was pouring water. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we believe that. We believe ah! that. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so I, uh, I think that the WordPress ecosystem is, is probably um, maturing, right? So it's not, it's, not an, um, it's not a fully mature ecosystem. And so I think uh, as, as it matures further, uh, we'll, we'll see more of this stuff happening. Um, it's it's a highly valuable um, ecosystem uh, for for plugin providers for for theme providers for um, you know for 
hosts, for security companies, for everybody, right? And so, uh, I and and for and for agencies and freelancers. So I I think we'll we'll start to see this. I think um, uh, Brian Krogsgaard has talked a bit about um, how the ecosystem is maturing. He's had a pretty big body of work around that. So yeah, I think we'll just see more. I think it's exciting. Uh, it's super cool to see people uh, throwing money uh, into into this place that we all play. So I think it's awesome. Kim, I wanted to ask you, uh, there's a quote from this article uh, where it said, WordPress is a huge market with real needs and it's often overlooked by many entrepreneurs. There's an active and strong community with caring values. So WordPress is definitely a great place to build a business. Uh, agree or disagree and, and thoughts on uh, multilingual and WordPress? Um, I absolutely agree with it, with the quote. And I, I just go... I'm glad they got it. That's great. It, it, when I see things like this, it shows me that some of the larger businesses of the ecosystem are taking notice of WordPress. And it is something then for business, not just for people wanting free plugins and, and that type of thing. Lee, um, are we going to see, in your opinion, more WordPress plugins being funded by venture capital? Well, I was just thinking about this. So you've got a plugin, which is a few megabytes in size, maybe. <clears throat> and the first thing, which does not answer your question, is plugin developers out there take uh, excitement, take energy from this because of the value that you can provide with just a couple of megabytes. Someone might want to invest 400 million into your business. So freaking A. Um, now, obviously, then on the flip side, yes, I think there is going to be more stuff like this. I mean, Weglot itself provides it as a service, so it's like 2,000 words free, and then the rest is like a software as a service. I can't actually work out, though, whether it's like, um, a, whether it's humans translating or whether it's like Google Translate. I suspect it's similar to Google Translate, which I don't like the idea of. Um, but with uh, with with WordPress, I mean, are we at 30% yet? Surely, WordPress having 30% share of all websites. So I think if you've got a platform that's going to have such a significant share of the internet, there is totally going to be people. I mean, what the heck are people doing investing in Snapchat, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> no comment. I, I would rather invest in a good WordPress. If I was a venture capitalist yeah. right now and I was seeing WordPress is, is taking a, a real good foothold in the, you know, in the website space, I think I might want to be putting my, my money there rather than a, uh, a picture, uh, an app that was really meant for rude pictures, let's face it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thoughts on that. I, I think Snapchat, like they turned down the $3 billion to be acquired by Facebook. It's, uh, it looked a little uh, insane at the time, but actually it, it turned out to be a good decision. Uh, WordPress is, is just as big as uh, a lot of you know, a lot of these platforms, you know, Facebook's at what, 1.8 billion, uh, WordPress is 30% of the web. That's, you know, hundreds of millions. Uh, they're just as big as, as many of these social platforms for sure. Um, Sally, I want to ask you just, you know, thoughts on this, uh, multilingual is, is it still an underserved market? Oh, I think, uh, there's definitely room to expand in this. Besides we've, we've seen plenty of, uh, examples that, that suggest that there is no such thing as market saturation uh, in the WordPress uh, ecosystem that, you know, how many page builders have yes. we got? How many, <laughs> how many form plugins have we got? I mean, you know, there, there, there is probably not infinite room for everybody, but people have still succeeded, you know, with bringing out a new form plugin when there've already been, you know, established leaders in the marketplace and, and so forth. So, uh, and, you know, I have had some requests for uh, multilingual sites because this is California. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of people who speak Spanish or who speak an Asian language. And, and depending on the, the client, they may need to, uh, to cater to that. Um, you know, what I, I just went over to the Weagle Out site because I wanted to figure out, like, how much do they now have to sell to make back that four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for their investors um you know I, that's the that's always the thing that worries me about uh, any kind of venture funding is that you know you then have to you don't have to like just make enough to pay your staff you have to make enough uh, to give the people a return on their investment and they're usually looking for a, a fairly large one 
Uh, and so, you know, that then puts you on, under pressure to, to make, you know, maybe more money than there's, uh, than there's room for. Because, yes, WordPress is a large ecosystem, but uh, it is impressively populated with people who want things for free. No, that's a great point. Um, the article states that they have 10,000 active users right now. 1,500 of them are on the paid plan. Uh, so the remainder of them, 85% are on uh, a free plan. Their, re their support tickets are going up. Uh, Jackie, what sort of things do you see happening uh, with this for them to expand growth? What is, it, In other words, what would it take for them to compete against uh, W? PML or uh, polylang or, or some of the other established people in multilingual? Well, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure about that, but one, one point I wanted to bring up was I think it's really uh, great that it's helping WordPress break out of silos, right? So if you have a site, you're kind of, you have it in your language, you know, and it's kind of all self-contained and just the way things are happening with the REST API and all the op possibilities that are coming forward. This is, looks like this is just another way to break your website out and be able to present it in lots of different ways and serve lots of other people. So in that regard, that's, that's a real opportunity for growth. And, and last question on this particular topic I wanted to ask Jonathan. Uh, the, if the, the mission of WordPress is to democratize publishing, um, seeing more multilingual options, uh, you know, is, is that helping the cause and helping it reach more people and helping more people publish? Well, it must, it must do really, mustn't it, John? Um, I, I think in uh, a multiple uh, elements, the business side and the question you just asked, it's great news. Um, I was going to say some other things, but I think I will shut up, John. And I think Lee wants the final word on this. He's got a, he's got something else to say about it, John. And then we'll wrap it up and go on to the main topic. Well, it might actually start a whole other conversation. And I wasn't being demanding or anything. Just you know, I, I said if I may, I was very polite. <laughs> I just thought very, that, like very English. But if you think about this, uh, the, the, the sudden thing in my mind that just sent me on a short circuit is why would I install a plugin that will translate my website into languages that I can't speak when I don't have anyone within my business c that can then support the person who speaks that language? So I've, always, I, I, I've only ever worked with companies who translate their websites into languages that they can then support. They have staff in-house that will be able to support that language. So I get what Weglot's about, but on the flip side, I'm... I'm also wondering if it creates a problem for people as well. Great idea to have it translated, but then suddenly the right. language barrier becomes an issue. Well, in, in, the, in the case that, that I'm thinking of, it was a um, women's health clinic and they had people on their staff who spoke mm. those languages. So they just wanted, you know, they wanted their website to reflect that and, and be available to, to people in the same way. And yeah, it's, I mean, maybe if you're like publishing news or something where, you know, you don't really have to do a lot of, of customer support, you could just, true, you know, true. have I something translated into a lot of languages. But I think in most cases where where people are wanting to do that it will be because they have somebody who has some facility with that language uh, already uh, and they you know they want to make sure that it uh, uh, that it works I mean you know doesn't everyone in Canada have to publish everything in French as well as English um, they, they just put a at the end of everything a? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Canadian I'm allowed to say that yeah. <laughs> I'm allowed <laughs> well with that um we're going to go for our break and then we're going to move on to our main topic uh the work the beaver builder i should say ecosystem see you in just a sec we're coming back from our break and we're talking our main topic which is the beaver builder ecosystem and this is a question i want to pose to kim and lee you guys are really familiar with beaver builder why what makes the beaver builder ecosystem and the community around Beaver Builder so special? Um, because obviously we don't see uh, a visual composer Facebook groups or a whole community around <laughs> visual composer. 
Uh, you there know, must be an I hate visual composer group. Somewhere. Oh, there's got to be, got to right? be like like the old AOL sucks Usenet. <laughs> yeah. So is it Cam? What, what is so special about Beaver Builder and and their community? Um, I, the community I'm I'm not as involved in, but Beaver Builder as a whole is it just works, and if you're going to have a page builder, that's what you want. It works, it's elegant, it, if you decide to turn it off, it doesn't leave 4,000 short codes that you then have to go clean out of your database. Um, it just, it, that's the best thing about it. And the support's fabulous. The guys who, and maybe that's what brings the community together, is that the team that, that put it together is a great group, great support, active in the community, and, um, and so I, it's my go-to. I teach it. Um, I do teach others also. And, and sometimes my clients push back on paying it, anything um, because I teach both the theme and the plugin uh, and, and use both also. So I just, I think it works and that's part of it. I love how you put that and in, in something that you said that, and I guess, you know, I, have a lot of clients they come to me and they already have existing sites and some a visual composer and some have you know not not so much divi or anything like that but i had a client come to me and they already had like beaver builder on their site and and that's the thing is is there's such a big difference between beaver builder and a lot of the other page builders not to disparage any of them but like what you said it just works it's kind of why people like apple um traditionally the, the things just work lee uh, you know in, in your observations you know mm -hmm. what is special about the beaver builder ecosystem okay <clears throat> well um a huge list i'll try and be as quick as i can the first of all there is the community the community is amazing so i'm actively a part of that there's a huge facebook group of over six thousand maybe even seven thousand i think a, a thousand get added every five seconds so it's growing rapidly and that community is super friendly so and that's the difference i've been in other page builders i will not mention the name elemental um when i first joined that group there was so much negativity going on for a while thankfully the elemental team have managed to turn that around and they're growing now a great community but from the get-go the difference from um beaver builder has been that they established that right at the very beginning it's been a fabulously um, friendly, supportive community. They listen to everyone. The guys get involved in local word camps. Uh, the guys are like uh, one of us as well. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you could get easily big headed. If, if I was the owner of Beaver Builder, I imagine I could very quickly let it go to my head because I'm sure they've hit over a million pounds in revenue and all that sort of stuff. They're doing so well. So there's the community and the, and the support that Beaver Builder give to that community, which is phenomenal. But then there's also the plugin itself. Um, I mean, Elementor is actually very beautiful and it's giving them a run for their money for, for sure. You've got to check it out. It's, it's really, really good. But um, what uh, Beaver Builder have done is, is gone for yes, an ease of use, but also an ease of development. So it supports multi-site out of the box, which is perfect uh, when you're on an agency license for agencies, uh, you know, running multiple sites for some of these bigger businesses. Um, but also to create new modules is super, super easy. It's the documentation is phenomenal. And essentially you're just creating little arrays. Um, and almost like if you were doing fields in ACF, the old fashioned way, um, then, you know, it's just a nice little array job done. You can fill in a, a fill it that in, you can do your front end PHP, a bit of CSS, you've created a module and it looks great, which means you can then as a developer, create all of those modules for your client that looks like the design, the client signed off. And you can disable everything else so that you can give the client that kind of visual experience of being able to build their own site whilst not allowing them to use com Comic Sans centered bold and, you know, throwing in loads of images and a random slider with images that are all the wrong shape, which definitely happens when people are left to, uh, to get crazy with, with Beaver Builder. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's the flexibility of the application and the friendly community. That bit about being able to, you know, turn things off 
so that there's a limit to what your client can do. I remember people in my meetup making that request directly at, you know, when it first came out and Marby's yeah. like, Oh, we didn't think of that. Obviously, you know, it was, it was requested enough that, uh, that they have thought of it. And, and I think that's important because definitely, although I, I was immediately impressed with the fact that when you turn Beaver Builder off, you, you just get taxed. You don't get a, you know, massive, horrible short codes. Um, I, I have always been a little concerned that it, a page builder of any kind gives your client the wonderful opportunity to turn the website you just built for them into GeoCities. I miss GeoCities. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, no, I, I get what you're saying completely, uh, Sally, for sure. Um, I, I think that's a great feature as well is, is limiting like what they can put in there and making sure that they stay within the lines. Uh, Mendel, you are very involved in, in building community for around a product. You know, what things has Beaver Builder done right that other page builders or other WordPress products could take a cue from? Yeah, I, um, two things come to mind. Uh, number one, I've uh, spent time with Robbie and seen him firsthand go and talk with some of the leaders within the WordPress community to get advice, right? And this isn't this is an advice and feedback that he uh, and the rest of the team take lightly. They, they take it, they implement it, um, and, and they build it into the product. Um, but I, I think more importantly is probably the fact that they create, um, they, they deliberately create a, a, an elegant solution um, to, to problems that uh, tons of people have. Right. And, and so they're, they seem to be focused on um, building a, an elegant solution rather than building something that's just going to generate revenue. Um, and and it, we all know that once once you build something like that, uh, then the revenue just kind of comes, right? Um, that combined with with pride for the product um, and and really like caring very deeply about um, their uh, their position in the community. How they treat their customers. Um, they have this th a great deal, I believe, of, of you know social responsibility to the community. Um, those things all combine just make for a really good, um, really good company. So, uh, yeah, I, I I think if anybody if there's a if there's a plugin developer or a theme uh, ecosystem developer out there, hell, if there's even a a, a builder um uh developer out there that wants to uh, get some advice i'm sure that i'm sure that those guys would um, be happy to help so jackie i have a question since i'm probably the least knowledgeable about beaver builder in this group um how do you handle licensing when you're doing a build for clients do you provide them with a license uh, your developer license and continue to renew that every year or do you ask them to purchase their own beaver builder license for that install i i would get them to purchase their own it helps the it helps beaver builder and also i give them a link that's got a referral uh, id in it so i get a little bit of a payout as well that's how you make all that money lee isn't it <laughs> <laughs> guys I, by the way i want to make sure that we don't gloss over this the beaver is really cute and so it's possible that it's just the beaver that like everybody loves this page builder for i'm just putting it out there it could just be the it is like, it's the name it's the name and the and the uh, the logo the whole thing i think that's what it is he is cute john, john you're on um mute oh. and he's got his eyes shut john you're on mute you're on you're mute, mute mate you're silence john <laughs> <laughs> but it looks really interesting. <laughs> no, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. But what I was, yeah, no, I think there is something to that. The the name it just rolls, you know, Beaver Builder has that double consonant, and the mascot. I mean, that beaver is awesome. You you can't dispute that. That's probably the best uh, mascot in the uh, WordPress community. I have a good mascot. So, uh, Jonathan, any experience with build, Beaver Builder? Well, um, I just want to say, I, I think when, um, like what Mendel said, you know, when you look at the checklist 
of the things that you should do right. They not only, you know, obviously you've got to have a, a superb product, which they have. But when you look at the other, you know, there's many people in the WordPress um, ecosystem that have a really good product and they've got no traction. But they've done a number of other things that are very smart there, you know, um, you, you know, around um, core team leadership in the WordPress community being not only user friendly, but developer friendly as well. You know, the, you know, the gen, you know, also they actively have done a lot of things going to word camps and the Facebook group and building community. So when you look at all the checklist of the things that they, they've done a number of things that have been extremely smart, haven't they, John? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Jackie, you had a really good question. You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> Yeah. How, how do you integrate this into your workflow if you're not using any page builders at all? Say you're, you know, just used to building sites, um, coding it up, and maybe using SAS and Gulp and whatever else you're using to build your sites. How would you kind of integrate uh, Beaver Builder into your workflow? Can, can I take this one? Lee, Lee, this question is for you. Oh, okay. You. Good, 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 good. Okay. There's two, two different ways. So um, we, we, the way we do it is, uh, so we will, will always receive a design. Um, and then what we will do is create the base theme. So we'll do things like the header and the footer and all that sort of stuff as a WordPress theme. And then the actual core content area is uh, the area that we will allow the user to, um, to, to edit. So if someone has an existing site, they, they can install Beaver Builder and wherever the content outputs is where Beaver Builder can sit inside of and you can drag stuff in and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so will the Beaver Builder themer kind of change that then where you exactly can... Exactly where I was okay, going. Go ahead. Yeah. So the cool thing is, is the new product which uh, has come out is Beaver Themer, uh, which is a lot harder to say, isn't it? Be Beaver Themer. Yeah, not, Jonathan is nodding profusely. Um, anyway, uh, yes. Yeah, so the well, way it that depends, one... It depends how much alcohol you're having, though, doesn't it? True. Uh, so so the way that would work is you would have, say, the Beaver Builder theme with Beaver Themer. Oh my gosh, that's all complicated. Good job I've not had any alcohol. And um, so the idea there is, is that could have, you can it, could have, it could become very interesting, though, couldn't it? It could have, it could have. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. she sells seashells on the seashore. No, we're good. Um, so you, you can actually design then the header, the footer, the sidebar, the whatever, um, as different components and then say, right, well, I want that to appear here and I want that to appear here. You can also control for Kim, would be interested in this. Uh, depending on user role and membership, you can show different menus and different things to different people which is really really cool and then the other thing you can do as well is you can actually design like your single page so if you've got a single post or a single post type page it will allow you to lay that out it has the ability to pop in custom fields in there as well if you're using acf um, so you can lay that all out and that's how it's going to look but you can also lay out what the loop is going to look like as well so if it's looping through a whole lot of blog posts or a I don't know, events or whatever it is, you can do all of that. And it's all point and click. I would say though, that the average Joe on the street is not going to be able to do that because you need to have the concept as I think anyway, as a developer um, of what is a WordPress loop, how is a WordPress theme structured? So there's quite a learning curve for the Beaver Thema, um, but it's definitely something that I think people will be able to use as a, um, as a rapid um, development tool to get sites online, maybe good at landing page sites or membership sites, etc. I still don't think though it's yet the sort of thing somebody would want to use on say a corporate website because I do worry that there is, if you give people too much power and flexibility, especially people who are not designers, you're, you're going to get kind of awful looking websites because people are just going to keep experimenting, etc. So hey. there you go. That was a really long winded answer. I'm I'm curious uh, what everybody uh, uh, thinks about um, how this is going to change the competitive landscape with things like Genesis, um, uh, because these these things uh, like Genesis in particular is is heavily centered on this this idea of modifying the loop, right? Like, um, so does does this? Do you think people are going to migrate from frameworks like that? Um, I, I, like I, I use Genesis on a couple sites, right? So do you think, do you think people are going to um, migrate from 
that to this, or do you think that uh, there are going to be virtues for using both? I think if you if you uh, I, I, if you've had a, not had a look yet, I recommend you do. But this is one hundred percent drag, drop, point and click to actually be able to create the loops and everything in your single post types, all of that stuff. With Genesis in the past, when I've and that's a long time ago, I don't remember it being like that or even that easy. It's like lots of drop down menus and selectors and all sorts of stuff, which even as a developer would sometimes screw my head. Um, whereas I was actually able to just do some example sites because I downloaded the beta a few months, a uh, couple of months ago or weeks, whatever it was, um, and, and was able to very rapidly build things. So I do think that this Beaver Thema is going to build up steam and is going to be biting on the heels of people like, um, uh, like Genesis, but it's not going to go uh, the way of Headway because of the great community that's behind Beaver Builder, et cetera. Because I think Headway kind of, had lots of good intentions but i'm pretty sure i think it was the the money or the uh, kind of the money and the, and, the, and kind of the lack of uptake etc that it struggled with whereas whereas beaver th th theme -er is building up on an already amazing platform yeah i don't know that there's necessarily a conflict lee i i think you must be remembering something besides genesis because genesis basically doesn't come with anything except a bunch of hooks for developers uh it's it's actually, i think i'm thinking of there's a plugin for it's uh, oh, i can't like remember the dynamic name dynamic or something yeah so, something like that something genesis dynamics like or something like that don't even you, go yeah. there um <laughs> But, you know, I mean, we're having a, we're having a meetup in, I think it's our June meetup is about actually Beaver Themer and Genesis together. Um, Whoa. There are a lot of people. <laughs> it already who, exists. Yes. There are a lot of people who do actually use both of them, um, mm. you know, because they, they like the kind of basic uh, structure and the, and the hooks you get in, in Genesis, but Beaver Builder also lets you do things like, you know, design quick landing pages or, or whatever. And I'm, I'm interested to, to, to see it, you know, I mean, I happen to, I, I looked at the, uh, you know, Beaver Builder's actual, like, you know, intro to Beaver Themer and here's what you can do. And it said something about like saving 14 hours on building like a single and an archive page for him. Like, wait, I don't think of myself as an especially fast developer, but it would not take me 14 hours to design a single and an archive uh, it, you know, page for, to build a, a single and archive page for, for a custom post type, even if I have like a number of custom fields in it or, or, or something like that. I, I'm not sure where they're getting their, where they're getting their numbers from. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think there are going to be places where it absolutely rocks and people for whom it rocks, but I have a feeling that if people, that, that people who leave Genesis for, uh, you know, and use like the, the, you know, the base beaver theme and, and, and so on are probably going to be the ones uh, who were struggling with Genesis anyway, because it's, it's a framework more oriented toward developers. So what, what's, I guess, what's the, um, what would you consider the pro and con? Sorry, John, I'm like hijacking the questions here, but what, um, go for it. <laughs> who, uh, like, how, what are the pros and cons? I, I think of Genesis as a kind of a nimble um, th uh, theme framework. Uh, and, and so I've always liked it for, for speed and simplicity. Right. Um, but, uh, what, like, I guess, what would you put in one column versus the other column? I haven't used Beaver Builder enough to, to know. I mean, the, the, oh, gotcha. you know, the yeah, I guess it's the, brand new, right? So, right. well, yeah, the theme, the themer is totally new and I'm not yeah, sure how yeah. that works and I'm not sure like what the, uh, output looks like. Uh, you know, of the of the code it generates or or whatever, but you know, the thing that I that you know the thing that I really like about Genesis is, of course, the thing that like completely puzzled me the first time around. You know, you open one of their like their single page template and all it says in it is Genesis, and you're like WTF? How do I modify this? But once you learn, it's just you know, it's so easy to hook into things and create a you know, and add things to a template without having to completely rewrite the template. And you can, you know, and you can keep those changes uh, if you want, you know, in many cases, you, you can keep all of that stuff someplace that you can maintain it fairly well and, and not worry about updates. Uh, even to, there are occasional updates to, to child themes. And, you know, a lot of my stuff these days, I just keep in WP clips. And so, people can, you know, update to their heart's content and it shouldn't mess with any of the, the customizations that I've made. Uh, 
but you know it is i think it's always been you know really a framework for developers to make it easier to you know to save time and once you've gone through the learning curve of understanding how it works to save time on on building stuff out and developing it and not mess with a bunch of options and this is and that's and and bloat in your uh, in your interface yeah what genesis lacks is just the drag and drop functionality you know out of the box to be able to do things so you have to write code to to modify it um, whereas i think for most people the future is going to be a lot more people will be building tools that let people do the drag and drop in the building and and pushing out content easily versus having to code it yourself each time you want to build it out. So I, th I think that's the trend. That's where it's going. So odds are something like Beaver Builder, Themer, maybe this is just version one and there'll be lots of changes and, and iterations of it. Mm -hmm. But eventually uh, a theme that lets you customize it very easily and push out a site is going to be a winner. So who's going to make the Themer integration with uh, Genesis? That'd be epic, right? Like, yeah, you're like that would be. It gener it generates all of your uh, all of your code for that. The the yeah. um the, the the documentation with Beaver Themer though is is whatever plugin sorry whatever theme you have you you can actually go through use something like Simply Hooks to grab all of the hooks and then you can actually add hook compatibility to whatever theme you're using. Um, and then Beaver Thema, you can hook whatever output you want in that relevant area. So I don't know, say you've got a hook for the header or something to appear before some content, et cetera, you can hook into those as well. So it's it's kind of, the, 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 there's no limits to where you can use it really. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, thing. you know, whatever, whatever base theme you like working yeah. with, uh, you know, Beaver Thema is, is designed for you to to keep that, but mm. then add on the, the Beaver Thema and, and, you know, save build time. I have noticed that a lot of, I mean, and this is just an observation, but it does seem like there are a lot of people that use Beaver Builder with Genesis in conjunction, and I'm not sure why that is, but it's just something that I've noticed. So I think that Beaver Themer, to, to, at least from what it looks like to me, is a lot closer in some ways to, to building, say if you had a Genesis, you're using Genesis with ACF, this is a lot closer to that. So I think, that's I think, the workflow. Yeah, go ahead. I think I know why, John, because um, unless you're really just concentrating on using Genesis, if you're, um, and I'm in that with my small team, is that we kind of swap around and that you don't get totally... Um, I'm trying to find the right word here. If you're just doing Genesis all the time, it becomes like second nature. Um, and then, but if you go back to the normal um, um, template system of WordPress, you get puzzled. And it's the other. And if you're if you're using the the kind of bog standard normal template setup, and then you go to Genesis, you're puzzled. And if you're doing both, you're switching back and forth. Um, um, depending on wh which camp you came from will depend how fluid you are. Um, yeah. So that's why they like, that's why I think um, Beaver Builder and Genesis is, because it's aimed at the person that's not always using Genesis all the time and, it, and it's become total second nature. And also it appeals to the, um, the person that likes the, the plus things about Genesis, but they have that moment like what Sally just talked about when you open one of the bowls and there's nothing there. Yeah, the one nice advantage though in using Genesis that I've found is it's much easier to read the code than it is in the normal WordPress uh, templates because they, they're littered with opening and closing PHP tags all over the place. And then they switch back and forth between HTML output back to PHP, HTML output. And when you're building with Genesis, you create a function, you know, you write a hook, you write a filter, you echo out your HTML and it's just, it's all PHP with your echoing. And it's so much easier to read. I get lost when I go, have to go back and I've been using Genesis a long time. So, but I get lost when I have to look at traditional like mm -hmm. WordPress templates because it just looks like a mess. 
Yeah, but I'm laughing a little bit, Jackie, not because, of, you know, everything you said Go is ahead. great. But I'm laughing because we're talking about, uh, about, you know, I'm not, I haven't done a lot of development for over 18 months. Um, but I'm talking about people that don't even know what a function is. Uh, um, um, there's a whole group of people that don't even know what the loop or function Beaver is. Beaver Builder is best for them. You yes, know, in that uh, but, case. But they like the stability, because this face facts, um, the, um, the nice thing about Genesis is you've got the framework and you have a child theme and it's really quite clear what the purpose of the child theme. When you go into the normal WordPress, you can end up with a grand, you know, a grandparent child theme. You can have a, a parent, a child and, a, you know, you can end up in that scenario quite easily. Um, and updating themes and also you've got the whole thing does the theme author keep their themes updated and all the security problems that can result we where you if you're in the genesis thing it's much clearer in a way and i think that's also some of the reasons why it really appeals to the developer crew as i call them why they like genesis no, definitely. Um, some, I'm going to ask Kim something really quick, but before uh, I do that, Jackie and Lee, you were just asking a question in chat. I want to make sure that the, the listeners uh, get that. Jackie, what were you asking Lee just a minute ago? I was just asking, how is the CSS output um, in, just, in just regular Beaver Builder? So the plugin, not the themer, I guess, uh, but just in there. Uh, when you make all your configuration changes, is it output inline? Does it create a CSS file? And, you know, how is that handled? And what happens if you shut the plug and you deactivate the plugin? You know, what do you end up with at that point? You're on mute. Sorry, I, I did it now. Uh, right, so uh, the way that works is when you, so this is default stock, this isn't you putting your own CSS in, which you also can do. Um, when you make a change in the module, that's going to change the CSS, all of the different, uh, what that'll then do is essentially loop through all those includes and then output it as one minified and cached CSS file. So we actually have a cached CSS file that's loaded. So on the web's kind of the web loading front it's super quick it's an include there's not loads of messy inline styling it doesn't look awful like visual composer when you look at the code you can actually read the code and understand it as a human being who understands code so that's that's really good if however you disable the plugin you don't lose any of your content so if you've got a header one h1 and paragraph text you don't lose any of that but obviously you do lose that css etc so you could be left with an unholy mess when you actually do disable it although your content is still at least in the content area i wanted to ask him um you know your workflow with beaver builder do you use just the straight beaver builder do you use any uh third-party extensions like the beaver builder like ultimate add-ons or, or anything like that I have not used the ultimate add-ons. I use just, uh, I use and teach the Beaver Builder plugin and the Beaver Builder theme. I think the whole theme that they have um, to incorporate it is, is done very well. I like the options they give people to get started because remember most of my people are just starting out. And um, so I like both of those. And then if someone's already picked another theme, they really don't want to go with a theme then I would push them to just at least try the plugin to build your, you know, for most of my people, it's building sales pages. It's building that beautiful uh, membership page when people first log in and you take them there so you can really lay out the content that they need to access quickly and easily to make it user friendly. So yes, Lee, I was very excited with the conditionals in the themer. When, when I watched the video and he explained those, I'm like, okay, I'm buying today. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Jackie, I've just uh, popped you a link as well. <clears throat> I was, what I was talking about was the Genesis Extender plugin. I've just been Googling it because I couldn't remember the name, and it's, it's got all these different options, et cetera. And, um, yeah, so check that out. Has anybody used the Design Palette Pro for Genesis? And to that's another way to change oh, your styles. I, and I, I think I had a client who had that. I, I hate those darn things. I haven't used it, so I've, I've never even seen it. Really. Well, the, the thing is that I understand why they exist, but if you know CSS, it is much faster to write the CSS than to play yeah. with all those stupid little toggles. 
Amen. Okay. Um, anybody else, uh, Lee or, or anyone else, do you have like a, uh, third party plugin that you use with Beaver Builder, uh, that you lean on or? Yes. Um, so there's the, uh, power add-ons. Um, uh, uh, if, hang on, uh, let me, I can't remember the address now. I think it's called Beaver Builder add-ons or power add-ons or something like that, uh, which I don't tend to use for me, but there are some clients who have purchased it so that they can get some of the extra template layouts. Basically it's, it comes with a whole load of extra layouts. Um, and it also comes with like cool column and, um, a row separator. So you can have like jagged effects or diagonal effects, etc. Um, so yeah, um, don't use it very often. It's only when people want to create landing pages specifically uh, for marketing where they'll get that uh, Beaver Builder add-ons. And a question for Mendel uh, as well. Uh, how do you think that Beaver, the Beaver themer is going to change uh, the development landscape uh, for themes? Do you see a lot of people adopting this and, and maybe uh, abandoning some of their current de developmental uh, workflows. Yeah, uh, there there are people in every step of the um, uh, every every step of the uh, I guess path to becoming an expert in in WordPress. Some people are on a path towards becoming a business expert um, or a site creator expert. Some people like Sally are killer at um, uh, coding things, right and uh, and so some people are on that path, right. To, to be, get an expert level in, in, in that way. Um, and then some people churn out of WordPress, right. And go to Wix or Weebly or Squarespace or some other site builder, um, that, that isn't, you know, isn't within the WordPress ecosystem. Um, I think that, uh, I think that we'll see some of those people that abandon, um, uh, Deciding to try out Beaver Builder and Beaver Themer. That is really hard to say. Beaver Themer um, uh, as, as a way to continue their progress. And I think people that build, um, that, that are site builders rather than site developers um, uh, will, will also uh, decide to go that route. Um, so I think it's really great for them. And it's probably going to keep more people in the ecosystem as, as they move forward. Um, it'll probably create some annoyance too, right? Because um, pe people will uh, progress and then uh, then their worldview of WordPress will be all drag and drop, right? And it, it won't be CSS. Um, it won't be, uh, you know, um, uh, messing around in functions, right? It'll, it'll just be drag and drop. So I, I think as a, as a global community, we have to consider how our community is kind of changing um, where we have some people really interested in just drag and drop. By the way, that's the way the world works, right? Is it's drag and drop. Um, and so uh, we, we have to understand that there are going to be those people and those people are super valuable, right? They're, they're important to the, the community. They're still building things. They're still creating. And, and I don't think they're any less um, important or valuable uh, as creators um, than people that, decide to do it in a different way. Um, so uh, I, I think it'll be great um, for the community. I think it's a progression um, towards a more user focused um, uh, e ecosystem in some ways, um, which is which is awesome. I just think we have to be aware of that and not, you know, when these people pop into uh, one of the WordPress Facebook groups or um, on forums or something, uh, not, not uh, you know, sometimes I see people treating um, dragon droppers uh, as as like less cool or like less capable than than people that that code and I, I don't think that's right. I think everybody has their um, their place as long as they're they're I guess uh, um, their 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 passion or their or their the way they think about it is in is in the right place. Their heart's in the right place, right? Um, in so anyway, that's yeah. I I see it. I see it progressing that way. So deep i love how you say that that you know everyone is important and and like you said there's a large segment of just people all over the world that drag and drop is what they're used to and and there's nothing wrong with that that is what they're used to not everyone you know is going to want to develop their uh site 
uh, coding. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody who uses Photoshop would want to have to like go back to the days of of you know having to write code in order to manipulate images or you know yeah. my my husband used to to build you know three D. Uh, animation software and yeah you know when he started out there were no tools who first you had to write the tools in order to be able to use them mm -hmm. i don't think anybody wants to go back to that and I, I i think if there's a you know if there's a way to let people have an easier time doing layouts um and i i am told that uh, you know beaver builder uses flexbox which is uh and you know we'll we'll eventually be implementing grid for for layouts if you know if these things are not producing code that's dangerous in in some way i mean just that's you know has a lot of security problems or it causes a lot of bloat or it's you know if if, if the tools are built well and they do what they're meant to do and they make it easier for people to publish their content and 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 make great websites uh, then you know i think that's a good thing we should yeah. underscore what you just said, and that is if the tools are built well, right? Right. Because there and are this, builders this out a, there that, are, that, that do create bloat and do make sites run slowly and do <laughs> kill caches. And that's Whoa. part. And that's part. That's part of why uh, you know why developers have been biased against them mm. is that so many of them have been bad. But it does not, you know that doesn't mean that all of them will necessarily be bad. And I, I think that the, the Beaver Builder team has worked pretty hard uh, to, you know, produce something that does not have the kinds of flaws uh, that some of its predecessors do. Yeah, I think the other factor, which is going to be quite interesting, is for, this is quite, well, in some ways probably isn't unusual, but at the present moment with Beaver Builder, you've got a better actual um for the non-developer type with beaver builder they've got a better experience of being able to change things with wordpress.org than they got with, with wordpress.com and um that's unusual and i don't i think automatic in some ways that's not totally acceptable in some ways because it's always been that um the real money generator, one of the money generators, has been the hosted solution, which at the present moment, compared to some of the competition that Mendel uh, mentioned, is looking a bit cranky, be quite truthful. It's um, not keeping up with some of the other competition. And how that's going to play out in the next year is going to be quite interesting, John. Most definitely, Lee, I know you have a hard stop, um, and Jackie, yeah. so uh, please let everyone know how to find you. Lee? Oh, you can find me at wpinnovator.com. Uh, thanks for having us, guys. Sorry that I have to fly off. No, Love you, gotta, you. you gotta go. All right, have a great night. And Jackie, how do we get a hold of you? You can get a hold of me at jackiedalia.com, at Twitter uh, as jdalia, and I'm over at rethink.fm. Thanks Definitely for having good. me on, guys. Oh, thank you. Great to see you, Jackie. Good to see you, Jackie. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. So have we exhausted this topic, John, or, um, and shall we wrap this up? One last question, and, and then I think we'll wrap it up. And, and, and I want to post this to the, the, the panel, and this is something we were talking about in the pre-show. Uh, the Beaver Themer just came out. It looks like it's a remarkable product. I mean, honestly, it, it looks like it's a great you know, product that's really going to change how people build themes, especially if they're already using Beaver Builder. But um, I guess there is some backlash. There's some people that were saying like $147 is, uh, or with the discount, I think it's like 110 or something like that. But there's, oh, um, goodness, this is too much. Yeah, and, uh, yeah that, it's team free shit. Yeah, there you um, go. Exactly. It, it, to to that to that point, I, I think spending money on software is important uh, because that's how that's how people yeah. continue to do, make. Do great you want software. it to still be there? Then how, maybe you should pay for it. However, I think it's also probably a good. Um, I think it's probably something that that Robbie and team is looking at and thinking: Are we uh, not? Are we pricing this correctly? But are we using the right method to price this? Um, the, the value clearly seems to be there. The question is, 
um, you know, is it, uh, do they stop giving the 40% discount on renewal? You know, is it, do they lower the price, but then allow, but, but then keep it at a hundred percent, um, uh, year after year. Um, I think there are, there are questions about pricing and it might just be that these people are just loud and grumpy, but yeah, I mean, I think some people are going to bitch about, it, you know, if, if it costs anything at all, but you know, some of it may just be about explaining the value. So yes, this may seem uh, expensive for like an end user with one site. But I don't think the Themer product is necessarily aimed at the end user with one site. It's aimed at somebody who builds sites for other people and is going to then, you know, charge them for using the, the, the product to create a theme and then give them a, you know, and, and then they, they have a theme. And so if you are a person using a tool to make money, uh, you ought to be willing to pay for it. Absolutely. And I look at it this way, because Sally, you're right. It's this audience is not, this audience is not my beginner student building their first website. That's what the page builders audience is. And even then when it, and they asked me like, wow, $99. I'm like, yeah, but if you hire your developer to do the same thing, how much are you going to pay for that? Um, but for this one, it is a development audience. And if you look at it, if you're, if you're pricing yourself at a value add pricing, which I always tell my clients to price themselves at, as opposed to just hourly, if I pay this $110, $147, and I'm charging people $100 or more an hour, if I'm thinking hourly, how quickly would I make that back? And then can I just wrap that into, okay, it's gonna cost X, Y, and Z for me to do this, but really it's only gonna take me a half an hour instead of an hour. So I just doubled my rates is basically what's happening. So I think that sometimes people who are making money in this need to price that themselves out a little bit and look at return on investment a little more than they just seem to look at, we want everything for free in this community sometimes. That's a great point. You know, you can't, I mean, and think about this, and, and the themer is not aimed toward end users. It is definitely aimed toward people who are building sites for other people. And $147, I mean, honestly, for most people, that is maybe two hours of work, you know, maybe even like less. So if you save that much time, then you've made it back. Or here's an idea, just add that much to the next site that you build. Just throw that on top and you've made all your money back. Uh, I think I might have some insight where this pushback might be coming from, um, but I might be totally wrong as well. I think it might come from the person, the kind of DIY person that goes to theme forest, theme forest and looks at one of those Swiss Army knife type of themes, which has inbuilt drag and drop functionality. And then they go to Beaver Build and they look at the price then they slightly bulk but you you know you're dealing with two totally different animals john well yeah, and, and and what did the builder of of that theme on theme for is pay for the extended license for visual decomposer uh to in order to be able to bundle it you know that that was not cheap for them and and you know they're trying to make it back through a volume of sales yeah the the i mean the other piece here is it's so i think it's uh, more, it, a lot more complicated to handle site by site licenses. And I think all Beaver Builders plans are, are unlimited um, sites. Uh, so just from a, just from a, like a rights management or a license management perspective, it, it's more difficult. Um, and, and it's possible, you know, I haven't, I haven't talked with them about this, but it's possible that they made a, a conscious decision that they're, that they don't believe that that part of the market is um, as profitable to them. You know, uh, the, uh, it would be super cool if you could go on there and get a one site license for, you know, 25 bucks a year and add on the, the uh, Beaver themer for, for another, you know, 50 bucks a year or something like that. Um, but I get, I get the feeling that it was probably a, a strategic decision not to cater to that, that one-off audience. I think it's a smart decision, really. I mean, cause the themers, it's, it's not for end users. I mean, so if you can't afford $140 a year, then maybe you shouldn't be a web designer. Sorry. Whoa. Yeah, I'm just saying. Well, what? yeah. And even the, even the plugin and even the, the main theme and the plugin that are aimed at 
do-it-yourselfers. You know, I would ask my people who come to me is, are, are you really doing this as a business, your do-it-yourself business, or are you just, you know, goofing around with something, you know, to show off your kids' pictures, which, you know, just put them on Facebook. But um, if it really is that, there are free themes. There, are, There is an absolute do-it-yourself base free theme you can use. If you're going into business and you can't afford, I think it's 199 if you buy the theme and the page builder together. If you're going into business and you're telling me you can't afford $199, you can't afford having a business. Flat out. Preach. <laughs> Amen, sister. I think, um, I think it's time to wrap it up, isn't it, John? Yeah, I, I think we now we've covered it. <laughs> 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 With that, um, Kim, how do we get a hold of you? Anything you want to promote? Um, you can get me, find me on Twitter at Kim Schivler, and you can always find me at how to build an online course.com for information on course building. I will be launching my next live class here in the next couple of weeks. So check it out. We will definitely check that out. Mendel, how do we get a hold of you and anything you want to promote? Yeah. Uh, t uh, Twitter, it's at if you will it, if, if you will it. And uh, that's, that's on all the things. So Instagram and all that stuff. Um, and if you want to see the, uh, the new interesting stuff we're working on at GoDaddy, it's GoDaddy.com slash pro. Oh, most definitely. You guys have, like changed the UI. I noticed that like in the last couple of days uh, internally. Yeah, we're trying to. We're trying to be more awesome every day. So uh, yeah, I, I feel you, uh, <laughs> Sally. How do we get a hold of you and anything you want to promote? Uh, you can find me at wpfangirl.com and also uh, check out our new eastbaywp.com website for the East Bay WordPress meetup. And if you live in the Bay Area, come and join us. Excellent, Jonathan. How do we get a hold of you? Anything you want to promote? <laughs> Oh, just uh, um, had a little bit more engagement. Um, basically, you want to remember, folks, that you can join the panel as uh, a guest. Um, we use the Zoom webinar platform, and we love you to join and be able to ask questions. We're here every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, aren't we, John? And how to get hold of me? Um, it's quite easy on Twitter, at Jonathan. Uh, at Jonathan Denwood or email me or go to the W Tonic Facebook page and leave a comment there. We're, we're easy to get hold of, aren't we, John? Yeah, super easy. Uh, and another thing I, before I outro here is uh, go to the WPTonic.com uh, slash blab. You'll see all our upcoming shows for the remainder of May. We've actually got Ollie Gardner from Unbounce. Bill Gadless from Imagine, Amy Porterfield, who literally wrote the book on uh, Facebook advertising, and Mike Morrison from uh, the membership guys. So, in, and we definitely have more coming up in June as well. So, sign up for the shows there. If you want to get a hold of me, you can find me on my website, which is lockdowndesign.com. You can find me on Twitter, lockdown underscore, or follow my Facebook page, just Facebook slash lockdown design for the WP tonic posse and we were in full effect today we want to say peace out and get your dose <laughs>